One of the exciting topics, model reference neuroadaptive control or MRAC with neural networks. Why exciting? Because, I mean, in most of the applications, um, if not all, we deal with unstructured uncertainties. You don't know the structure of this uncertainty. And we, in this case, we need to resort to universal function approximations and don't make a big deal about neural networks. I mean, I covered neural networks and neural adaptive control in the previous videos. I mean, neural networks will allow you to approximate um, unknown functions up to a desired accuracy. So, um, all right, so we are going to look at this system. Um, unknown control effect effectiveness, unstructured uncertainty. If, because some of you might will, on this playlist, Adaptive Control and Learning, if you watch neural networks and neuroadaptive videos, and right now jumping to this video, don't do that. So please uh, look at the previous videos in order to develop full understanding. So in your careers, you can be in academia, you can be in research labs, you can be in industry. If you want to implement and understand adaptive control super well, in all details, you need to go through from the very first video of this playlist until to the very last video. And there is a sequence that I basically follow. And this is coming from my experience that um, I develop over the years myself, how I implement. <coughs> And don't forget, no need to rush. The most important skill is the skill when you know in depth. All right, if you watch the previous videos, which I will assume, then I am proceeding with the model reference neural adaptive control for this system. All right, in the former version of this video, so-called on this playlist, neural adaptive control, which was actually, you know, a um, scalar case, X was scalar. When X was scalar, right, um, we follow this unstructured uncertainty parameterization, delta, basically unknown W multiplied by basis function, including radial basis function in its elements, and the residual error coming from the universal approx you know, approximation theorem, meaning that if you have, um, since you are approximating a function over a compact domain, don't forget that, a domain of interest, then uh, there will be a residual. You can include more and more neurons, more and more radial basis functions. If you do that, this epsilon will get smaller and smaller. And um, I posted also a neuroadaptive control example in MATLAB uh, numerical study uh, after I covered neuroadaptive control yeah, up in the playlist, it greatly illustrates once you put more and more radial basis functions, your system performance gets bigger and better and better. Why? Because this epsilon getting smaller. But X was scalar. So, and it was so clear, right? In that case, we only had one X. And if, we, if our system X is operating between minus A and A, this ha doesn't have to be symmetric, minus A to B also works. Then to cover this domain, we were placing radial basis functions. And um, if we include more, 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 this epsilon was going down. Now, it works, I'm going to explain how it works for the higher order case, because this is one of the points that I, um, getting, I am getting questions. Um, there are one or two questions on one of the uh, videos uploaded to this channel. I am getting same questions from my lectures, my presentation talks online, um, on site. Basically, in high order case, we are going to follow this philosophy in a slightly different way. In this case, X has N elements, right? X1, X2, all the way up to Xn. That means that basically for each state, find operating limits for each scalar Xi and make sure basically, uh, basically first, of, first of all, sorry, find operating limits for each scalar Xi so such that each Xi should stay its own 
compact domain DI. Then include radial basis functions for each AI, XI, to cover the DI. So basically all you need to do this for each state. Replace X in this picture with XI and D with DI. For example, let's say your um, system has two states. Um, it can, the same discussion applies to any states actually. So this is without loss of generality, X1 and X2. So you are going to include radial basis functions. Let's say X1 is the position that changes between some limits. I include enough radial basis functions to cover that limits. And X2, let's say my velocity changes between some lower and upper limits. I also include the radial basis functions to cover that range. This will correspond to the domain one, compact domain. This will correspond to compact domain two. I illustrated previously in the numerical study, it is also good to include a bias. Bias is great in canceling some disturbances and um, it is a great tool to include. I personally always include in applications of adaptive and neuroadaptive control architectures. All right, um, I hope this is clear. So, um, and um, let me know if you have any comments or questions. We can talk more through the chat. All right, continuing, I mentioned that after making that point on radial basis function selection, basically um, we have UN and UA. UN is the nominal controller, static nominal controller that I am using from the previous videos. Again, if you want me to cover a dynamic controller like PI, let me know. Um, um, let me know your questions. And I am following similar steps here. I am adding and subtracting this. And with the term basically I added here, since this was my nominal control signal, this, let, this along with this UN produces these nominal system dynamics here. And I am sending this inside the brackets. To do this, I need to hear lambda lambda, put lambda lambda inverse. That's why you have this lambda inverse here. I am going maybe a little bit fast because I did these manipulations in uh, one of the former videos, more specifically model reference adaptive control video. And then you end up having this X dot dynamics given here. The only difference of this X dot dynamics from the model reference adaptive control video that I posted before this video is that you have this extra bonus, which is coming from the radial base, basically universal function approximation error. And since you're over the compact set, that error is upper bounded by epsilon bar. All right, so um, this is our X dot dynamics, this is our reference model. You form the error the way we did before. Then you arrived these dynamics and this is the weight update low. And this is coming from, this is new. As com If you compare this with the previous videos, this is new. And because of this term, you are not going to get V dot less than or equal to zero. Because of this, I am adding sigma modification. If you don't want that sigma modification, you can also use a projection operator. By the way, in some applications of adaptive control, I use projection operator and sigma modification together. So um, you basically push the entire term. Something to keep in mind, um, I because I coded like that, I tried to explore you know, uh, sigma, how it will improve the performance or not, how it will basically help me achieve a better performance or not. Um, um, I code it, sometimes I then turn it off, set sigma to zero if I'm using projection operator or make the projection bound super large and rely on the sigma modification. So I kind of explore the trade-offs. Anyway, without loss of generality, since because of this term, I cannot obtain V dot less than equal to zero, I am employing a sigma modification. And um, now proof exactly follows from the proof of foundations of stability analysis. 
and it holds when v is constant or v is time varying it holds for both cases um, and in this case it is identical basically you can look at the foundations of stability analysis video um, and basically this is how neuroadaptive control works you are going to achieve the boundedness of e and w hat i would like to make a couple of comments uh, I, ha I have posted performance recovery um, video for the scalar case when I was introducing you to the main elements of adaptive control theory. Uh, I am planning to do uh, a performance recovery case for the high order case. I have received some emails and, um, and uh, several of you left some comments to the YouTube videos. Um, I believe some messages from Twitter as well. Um, anyway, so after several of you watched this performance recovery for the scalar case, you guys are interested um, how you can generalize it to higher order systems or higher order case that we covered in these video series, recent video series. Um, first of all, thank you for your interest. Uh, I agree it is a very effective method, not because I am one of the developers, but I implemented on many scenarios uh, one of my key contributions to adaptive control theory. So if I am going to, I am planning to make a video about this performance recovery, which will be based on the material of this paper. So if you want to, if you are impatient, you can just go to this, you know, and you can directly see the algorithm. I am more or less following the same notation uh, that I uh, use in these video series, so you can implement it as it is. Um, I also should mention that a sister approach to this method on performance recovery is documented in this paper. Actually, um, if my memory is correct, we have been invited uh, to publish a paper in Machines um, and um, we first developed this uh, direct uncertainty minimization framework or with its different name artificial basis functions in several other journals. So this is the most comprehensive approach that I developed with Benjamin and Jonathan. Um, um, this is a sister approach that doesn't modify the reference model. If you remember the performance recovery video, we achieve a great performance by modif to achieve the you know ideal performance. We needed to modify the reference model. This is the sister approach. It basically achieves the same one without modifying the reference model. Um, two complementary yet different approaches. So if you are really interested in adaptive control. You, I, you should read these two papers. Again, I am not trying to advertise my research. This is not my intent. You know, I have written more than uh, probably, you know, I, personally, I have written close to 300 papers and probably more than half of it is on adaptive control. Um, the, the intention of these YouTube videos are not to advertise my research, okay? Uh, I, am, I don't have that personality, but when you use neural networks, right, you include, you, um, we know that if you include more neurons, you achieve an ideal performance. In practice, you will never know how more is more. Like, should that you, should you include, include, should you include 10 neurons, 15 neurons, 100 neurons, when the performance will, uh, get better. For some systems, really, uh, complex systems, uh, sometimes I needed to include hundreds of neurons or some simplistic systems, maybe some five neurons work. Um, but this doesn't come with the, if whether the system is simple or complex. Sometimes for simple systems, believe me, like a DC motor control, I needed to include a lot of neurons. So um, I know the system states will get bonded, but this residual approximation error, epsilon, um, I, you, are, you, you are getting my point, right? So neural networks are great, but sometimes um, they can achieve a poor performance because you include less number of neurons. You can, all, you can correct that performance by including more neurons, but how many is the correct, you know, will give you the best answer. Sometimes it can be tricky. 
And for this reason, performance recovery ideas uh, like documented in these two papers uh, can be helpful to you. As this being said, I also would like to take your attention to the catch-22 problem. Um, catch-22 problem is the following. I basically we're gonna explain this uh, using this figure. I am going to do a design and let's say I have my you know my state x and I am operating this between this minus a or a or b it hasn't again doesn't have to be symmetric limits. Now well under ideal conditions my system state x won't leave let's say converging somewhere here, depending on the comment, won't leave this state. But your system, don't forget, your system is uncertain. And the natural question is, what happens if your system state X leaves this compact domain? When I ask this question to several researchers, um, the common answer is, well, make this domain larger. Okay, well, okay, let me now change it between minus d to di. I made it larger. Now, my natural question doesn't change. My system is uncertain. What happens if now leaves this larger compact domain as well? The answer is, well, make d even more larger. Then you can ask, what happens if you leave what, my system state x leaves that more larger set? This is kind of a catch-22 problem. And... Um, so it will require you to place, you know, um, let me put it this way. If your system state X leaves this compact set, you no longer have neurons. You cannot apply universal function approximation theory. So basically your system is in trouble. Your adaptation will be in trouble. You have no, no neurons, zero. So in this case, instability may happen. To avoid this, you can include more neurons, but how more is more, so or how large this compact domain D should be. For many years in the literature, basically, this was the answer from scientific researchers, like, well, make it larger, even larger, more larger. Well, okay, I mean, um, and um, there are some solutions as well, as, the, as this being said, to address this catch-22 problem. I am going with the name that is known in the literature. And um, one solution, one effective solution is to is using uh, Lyapunov barrier functions. Um, and this is uh, this is the paper that I would like to uh, reference a neuroadaptive control architecture for model reference control of uncertain systems with performance guarantees. In this paper, we are basically ensuring that if you start inside this compact set, we are doing for error, but it has a map to the X, then you would never leave that set. So if you are interested uh, me to cover this neuroadaptive control strategy, uh, this is later called, you know, set theoretic adaptive control. Um, let me know, I will be happy to cover that um, the results in this paper, but I hope uh, even if you don't read this paper, I just want you to be aware of this catch-22 problem. If your uncertain states leave outside this compact domain, you have no neurons, then your adaptation is in trouble. The solution, you can do so two, two solutions. You can follow this path uh, and include more neurons, which is okay, but you know, you you know my point, right? I mean, uh, X can still leave that set, but my X, based on my experience, if you make D large enough, that's good. Although there is some uh, point that, well, you, you will always have in your mind, what if in that X will, you know, uh, go outside that larger domain? Practically, it works quite good, but if you want the concrete solution is to using uh, Lupino barrier, um, or generalized functions such that if you start inside the set you are not going to leave the set all right i think i don't want to make this video longer i hope this you know you found this 
uh, useful. Uh, let me know um, if you have any questions. Leave some comments.